Whereas on one hand, hey teachers are not allowed to charge extra fees. On the other hand, the government has consistently failed to remit the capitation money. So how then do you expect these heads to run their schools? That's the question that really needs to be answered. How does the government expect secondary schools to run without money? If the heads cannot charge extra fees, and yet the money that's supposed to come from the national treasury is not coming. So what, how then do you want our secondary schools to be run? This is an issue, Mr. Speaker, that calls for serious introspection, not only on the part of the government, but indeed on the part of the whole citizenry. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker this House has got a duty to address this matter with finality. This House must address this matter with finality. Leave alone even the issue of the arrears. The arrears are the figures you're talking about are monumental in terms of billions of shillings. I can see the chairman of the education committee, my friend uh, is looking at me, Cornel uh, uh, Serem. Is it? Meli. Yeah, Meli, you know, he's my neighbor uh, up there in Kisumu. You know, unless you want us to continue burying our heads in the sand, we must either say that the government is unable to support secondary education by way of competition or allow the head teachers to charge extra fees with attendant ramifications. Uh, 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 and therefore, in a nutshell, I want to say this petition is, uh, is uh, timely and it needs to be processed expeditiously. Expeditious. In fact, I would suggest that in addition to the Committee on Education held by my friend Meli, we also need perhaps to incorporate some more people so that we have this issue dealt with in a holistic manner. Thank you. KJ. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. And this is an important petition, Mr. Speaker, because it goes beyond the disbursements and the delays in disbursements. Mr. Speaker, we, we as a country will not be able to finance the support of students whose numbers we do not know, Mr. Speaker. And that's why the drive towards digital identification and the digital, um, uh, the, the digital registration of students becomes extremely important, Mr. Speaker. Previously, the government has been disbursing monies to schools without even ascertaining the exact number of students in any given institution. It has been guesswork, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if the government would be able to identify an individual at birth, such a government is able to plan for the life of the individual not only through schools but even as they come into the working um, environment and as they go into becoming an economic contributor in this country so mr speaker as the petitions committee looks at this as the education committee looks at this they've also got to be able to come up with a system that establishes the exact number of learners in our institutions Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Oyola, Joseph. Is that Joseph Oyola? Yes. Give him the mic. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker. I was not prepared for this petition. Oh, you are on the screen. Kamei. Beatrice Kamei, are you on the screen for this? Those of you who are not interested in this petition, can you delog yourselves off the screen? In the, we interventions. Posing David. Where is Posing? I'm here. Yes. Of course, you know, Mr. Speaker, I will. Uh, I was prepared to lay a paper, but of course I can say something. Speaker, this is a very important petition, as members said. But I'm asking myself, does that require a petition, Speaker? Doesn't require a petition. It's common knowledge. Where is the minister in charge of education oh, in this country? Any Kenyan has the right to petition this house, whether it's common speaker. knowledge or not. I thank you, Speaker. 
But that is an indictment, Speaker, to the Minister of Education. That's what I'm trying to say.